Hi, I'm Utsa, a behavior researcher by training and a slow traveler by passion. Postcards from Nowhere is a travel podcast where I condense a decade of travel experiences and explore not just the where but also the why and how to travel. My stories emerge from slow traveling the less explored parts of the world: Bosnia and Herzegovina, Armenia, Uzbekistan, and even China. At the end of each story, I give practical tips and new ideas about how to travel better. This week, in the 8th episode of the series Ireland Untraveled, we visit one of the most unique emigration museums of the world. And on the eve of the anniversary of India's 75th Independence Day, discover the story of how we got our national anthem. Dublin 1856. The city had never seen anything quite like it. Over 3600 bronzed and bearded red coats marching along the quays on both sides of the river Liffey. Some of these soldiers hobbled on crutches. Others were missing arms. These soldiers were returning victorious from a bloody victory. Fighting for the British, the Irish forces had managed to defeat the Russians. and capture Crimea. Fergus Farrell, the Lord Mayor of Dublin, persuaded the British to throw a lavish banquet as an appreciation to those who had just returned from the war. The locals thronged the streets as the soldiers marched past. The Dubliners were waving their hats, cheering loudly and belting out rousing ballads. The soldiers marched into a massive warehouse along the dockyards of Dublin. It took them a mere 30 minutes to get seated. The meat on the menu alone comprised 250 hams, 230 legs of mutton, 500 meat pies, 200 turkeys, 250 pieces of beef and a lot more. Everything was served cold except 3 tons of boiled potatoes and 1.5 tons of plum pudding. The banquet went off smoothly and was a great PR success. It got covered across the British and European press at the time. Over 150 years later, I found myself holding a passport in the very same warehouse. When it was first built in 1820, it was used to store precious cargo such as tobacco, tea, and spirits. I meanwhile had nothing to trade and wasn't technically going anywhere. It was neither an airport, bus, train, or ferry station. I was in fact in possession of a fake passport procured not so clandestinely. for a sum of 17 euros and 50 cents but i assure you i was in no trouble for at least on that day alone a few hundred people held passports like mine for it was the entry ticket to one of the most unique museums i have witnessed in over a decade of travel epic the irish emigration museum and no the name epic isn't some fanciful millennial buzzword but an acronym which stands for every person is connected The museum was voted as Europe's leading tourist attraction at the 2019, 20 and 21 World Travel Awards. It consists of 20 galleries slickly designed in a technologically immersive manner. As one passes through each gallery, you stamp your passport as if you would if you passed through various ports. By no means is the Epic Museum a unique museum about migration. Other countries including Germany and Italy have them as well. But what makes the museum unique is how beautifully it brings to the fore the layered experience of migration with the stories of Irish men and women who went on to change the world. Ireland is almost unique in that sense that for a population of about 7 million residing in Ireland, the Irish diaspora totals to about 70 million. Which means that for every one Irish person living in the country, there are 10 who live abroad. Could we really tell the story of Ireland without shedding light on the story of Irish emigration? After all, emigration is not just a chronicle of sorrow and regret. It's also a powerful story of contribution and adaptation. In 1845, at the height of the Great Potato Famine, William Wood and Ellen Morris had moved from Dublin to London. Ellen was an Irish Catholic of modest means. And when her husband passed away in 1852, 
she was left alone to take care of their 5-year-old daughter. Fortunately, a friend of the family, Ellen Marriott, agreed to bring up the daughter Annie and ensured she received a full education. Annie grew up to become involved with the working poor in Manchester and it pushed her towards socialism and away from Christianity. Annie emerged as one of the foremost free thinkers of her generation, championing the cause of women's and workers' rights and securitism. True to her roots, she also became a strong advocate of home rule in Ireland, putting her in direct conflict with the British Empire. But we know Annie better for two reasons. She also championed home rule in India. In 1916, she along with Lokmanya Tilak launched the All India Home Rule League. For Annie was none other than Annie Besant, who was instrumental in the foundation of the Theosophical Society in Adyar, Madras. She joined the Indian National Congress and in collaboration with Madan Mohan Malviya went on to set up the Banaras Hindu University known as IIT BHU today. She became one of the rare female figures who were universally admired across the pre-independence political spectrum. Annie Besant also influenced an Irish protestant woman who went by the name of Margaret Cousins. She too was a part of the Theosophical Society and moved to India in 1915. In 1922, she became the first woman magistrate of in India. In 1927, she co-founded the All India Women's Conference, serving as its president in 1936. But that is not why we remember her. In February 1919, Rabindranath Tagore made a tour of South India and came to Madanpalle. He was tired sick and disturbed by the sight of fabulous wealth stored away in temples when it might be put to the education of the young he met with miss cousins at madanpalle college and the visit to the educational institute lifted his spirits he was requested to sing a bengali song and tagore sang a song which called for victory nobody knew what that victory was or when was it to come nonetheless the next day he provided detailed notes to miss commons who learned the song herself This single act of attention had a lasting impact on the Indian nation. On the eve of the 75th anniversary of Indian independence, we must remember that Miss Commons had preserved our national anthem, Janagana Mana. Meanwhile, Annie Besant had one more cause she held dear: access to birth control for women. In spirit, she found a compatriot in Margaret Sanger. an American writer and nurse born to Irish Catholic parents. In 1916, Sanger opened the first birth control clinic in the United States, which led to her arrest for distributing information on contraception. In 1921, Sanger founded the American Birth Control League, which later became the Planned Parenthood Federation of America. In 1929, she was banned from public speaking in Boston. She sealed her lips with tape. and wrote her article on a blackboard Annie Besant Margaret Commons and Margaret Sanger three women of Irish origin daughters of emigrants went on to leave an indelible impact on the world but one of the most striking aspects of the epic museum is that it does not hold back in accepting the negative impact its migrants had on the world while the museum notes the contributions of Margaret Sanger it also notes that she became entangled with the eugenics movement and was in touch with the white supremacist Ku Klux Klan of North America. Similarly, an entire section of the museum is called the Notorious Irish, which features Lizzie Halliday, a serial killer from County Antrim, who was once dubbed as the worst woman on earth. In the previous episode titled Titanic Mosul and the Global Shame of Western Museums, we shed light on how museums in the West fail spectacularly at soul searching. and ignore the darker more difficult aspects of their history i am pleased to report that the epic museum shows us the way balancing the good and the bad giving us a banquet of emigration in the story of how migration shaped the world this banquet rivals that given to the 3600 soldiers returning victorious from the crimean war only this time all the cheering and rousing ballads are tempered by a quiet acceptance of wrongs done and since committed If you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network you can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com 
You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Utsav Memory on Twitter and YV Travel Forty Two on Instagram.